Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a digital rebar training video about how to use Terraform and digital rebar together. Ultimately, we'll be showing how to add a new cloud into the cloud wrapper using the Terraform cloud API interfaces. But first, we have to start with the basics and just show you how to use Terraform with digital rebar. The setup I'm using is, it already has context set up and the cloud wrapper. So I can do a basic operation like I've already staged here to set up a machine just using say a Linode cloud provisioning. I'm using my Linode profile here and I can do a cloud provision and run this operation. When I take this action, it's going to run Terraform and then Ansible and then Digital Rebar Agent to fully provision the machine in Linode. If I jump over to Linode, what you'll see is I have the system spinning up right now and that will allow us to run through this process. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to break it down how it works piece by piece. The first thing that I actually need to do is to start with a Terraform plan. So in the background, I have digital rebar spun up or digital ocean spun up over here with no machines at all. And I've built a Terraform plan for, for, for digital ocean that just runs on my local machine. It's much easier to troubleshoot a plan from a command line with Terraform than it is to wrap it into digital rebar and then try to figure it out. Once I've got the basics, it's pretty easy to do those next steps. So I'm going to take that plan. I've already initialized Terraform, but I'm going to reinitialize it here, show you that I have a green light, and then I'm going to apply this plan. Now you'll notice I've included some things in my uh, Terraform file, like my SSH key and my token so that uh, they don't have to be in the plan. And then we'll substitute those for digital rebar variables in a minute. If I go ahead and apply, DigitalOcean is going to, Terraform's talking to the DigitalOcean APIs and creating the machines. And in a moment, you will see that I get a working machine out of DigitalOcean. It's exactly what you'd expect. This plan isn't particularly complex. It's got the standard provider header. This is the V.14. It has the provider for DigitalOcean, an SSH key, and then a droplet definition. Also has some output variables that Digital Rebar is able to pick up and assign to the machine. So pretty straightforward things. If I come over in here, this is the machine I just created using Terraform, and I can happily Terraform destroy it. and clean up those resources so I don't get charged for them. All pretty straightforward. But our job here is to turn this into a digital rebar template, which is pretty straightforward to do. So here is the same template I have. Over here, I have our cloud provision reference template. I pulled up the Linode provider here. It's very similar to what's going on with the digital ocean one. And I will, let's go ahead and break them down and, and map them into digital rebar. First, I don't need the variables anymore. I'm going to pull those directly from digital rebar variables. I still need the provider segment. Uh, I still need the required provider segment. The provider segment, it's asking me for my token variable, which I'm going to do by template substitution in this case. So now param digital ocean token very similar to what you would see over here in Linode, where it's asking for the, the registration tokens. I went ahead and beforehand built this uh, profile so that I could create a secure token. I'll show you exactly how I did that uh, and other created other parameters for DigitalOcean as we get into the cloud provider place, my knee jerk control S. Uh, I'm not saving this, this is just a throwaway template. We do need SSH keys. Here, if we look, we have a uh, SSH key injection place right here. This looks great. I'm, I can literally steal this directly, and uh, but I don't need it to be an array. I just need it to be a simple string, so that looks good. So now we have our SSH key available. And instead of using a name that's generic, I'm actually going to say DRP, and I'm gonna pull in my machine, my machine name. 
this little bit of GoLang template will bring my machine name. So it's this uh, tells us what that uh, key was created for. Our pattern here is that we're going to create a machine uniquely for each uh, machine, or SSH key uniquely for each machine. So now we're getting down into the droplet replacement. All that is, is great. Image, we don't need to change. Region and size, we're going to eventually put variable substitutions like we've done here, but for our test, we don't need that. We do want to give it a unique name. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Machine.name here will give me exactly the substitution that I'm looking for. SSH keys is just referring to that block earlier, so that looks great. And then tags, we have a standard uh, block for tags over here. I can just gra grab straight out of that reference template. I'll explain it to you though, so you understand what's happening. It's building an array and then doing a range over all of the machine profiles. It then adds the profile to that list and then includes digital rebar in that list. So if this is working correctly, each profile on the machine will show up as a tag inside of the service provider. After that, we're pretty much done. These outputs will be automatically read into Digital Rebar by the Terraform Apply task. So this is a convenience. If it's named Machine IP, it'll actually update the machine's IP address for us, which is extra handy for the next range of steps and Ansible and things like that. But I could take any outputs that I want to capture in the Terraform schema and then upload those into Digital Rebar as variables. That assignment is automatic. And at this point, we have taken a Terraform plan changed some of the parameters for variable injection from digital rebar, and got ready to create it as a new uh, template. So all we have to do is go down over into templates. I've already created one here in my rehearsals. We're gonna create a completely new one, do.tmpl. That looks great, paste that in. All of those things are great. I don't need any headers or anything special here. And I now have my <laughs> filter there, my DO template. Here it's down here. You can see it's one I've been editing because it's unlocked. Looks like we're good to go. So that gives us a template. It doesn't give us a way to use that template. Um, so let's go through that process just a little bit. In order to make this work, we already have a task for Terraform. So we just need to add a Terraform training. I'll just call it uh, TF train as a stage. That looks really good. For that stage to work, first thing I'm gonna to need to do is start in a context. That looks good. I chose runner in this case, even though I wanna to get to Terraform because the, before I can do any of this work, I actually have to build an RSA key. So I need to create an RSA key. We have a standard task for that at a library. Then I can come in and say, I'm gonna to switch to Terraform, looks good. And then I can do my Terraform apply task. Excellent. Now I have a very si si simple sequence of standard tasks that will create an SSH key and then run Terraform for me. I wanna be a little bit fancier than this. I'm gonna actually go in and define a Terraform action Here's my plan action. And I'm gonna tell it I want to apply. If I wanted to destroy, I would use destroy instead. And I also wanna say that I have a Terraform uh, plan templates over here. And then this we defined as do.tmpl as our template. So this will call that plan template. These are defined at the, at the stage level I could define them as parameters on, the, on a profile or other, other system. In this case, we're gonna keep it simple and just hardwire them directly into that uh, learning stage. Now, I do also then need to create a workflow for this. So we're gonna call our TF train, we're gonna create a workflow. It's only gonna have that one stage in it, which is TF train, that looks great. And I'm gonna make it green to make it easier to find. That looks really good. So now we have a workflow that will call our Terraform plan and build it in, in uh, DigitalOcean. I'm gonna create a fresh new machine for this and we'll see, see how that works out. Oh, one other thing I need to point out is I have behind the scenes created a DigitalOcean profile. 
that profile has the DigitalOcean token that we're going to need in our template. Remember, this is one of the parameters that's injected, and this has my actual token. I did this in advance because creating the token in advance allowed me to make it secure, which then allows it to hide the value and, and encrypt it in digital rebar. So that's a convenience for me when I'm shooting the video and not having to expose my API keys to all of you. So let's create a machine that can actually do this work. Uh, we will call it the Duo Train. We've been working with that as a name and that looks pretty good. We can create, we're gonna use the runner context to the starting point just because the machine doesn't exist yet. And then TF, TF Train is our workflow. That's excellent. Now, before we go any further, I do need to make sure I use this DigitalOcean profile. So that will inject that parameter credential. I could have assigned it on the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and use my personal profile. This is an empty profile, but it creates tags called vehicle on the system. And that should be enough. This is gonna start a machine with a runner so that we can just start a workflow and then it'll start this TF train workflow going. That looks great. And if everything is good, it should have gone ahead and started this workflow going. Let's see. There's discover base. That looks good. T oh, TF train is not enough of a workflow for it to be the first. So I, I did need it to actually start discover base. Now I should be able to launch the TF train workflow, which looks good. Or not because it's not actually starting my TF train workflow. Oh, of course it doesn't. I didn't add any stages. If you're following along at home, you can be like, Rob, that was obvious. You probably caught it and I missed it. So I had a workflow that had no stages in it. That's why it didn't do anything. Sometimes it's helpful to see how this stuff looks and then understand what troubleshooting looks like. So TF train, starting the workflow again. I cleared the workflow. I'm going to restart it. Now the workflow is running very happily. First thing, it's, it's created an SSH key for me. I'll show you what that looks like. So here's our SSH key, and it's trying to run Terraform. That's excellent, but it failed. So let's see what happened. So in this case, we have our plan running. This is actually a Terraform error, and it's telling us that it was unable to authenticate us. So this is literally running Terraform. Something happened with my key. Let's see, error creating SSH key, right. So the first thing it does is do that. Post to this is telling us 401 unable to authenticate. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna come back to that template I wrote, do.template, and assume that I made a typing error of some type, digitalocean.token. That looks very good. Duo template, this looks good. Digital Ocean token should be just fine. Oh, this should be pretty straightforward. Let's see if I actually remembered. Here's my Digital Ocean token, Digital Ocean token. All that looks just peachy. Sometimes, let's find out if I can just run it again and see if the error repeats itself. In this case, uh, looks like something happened in the back end, but it wasn't related to my uh, that that actual error. Uh, now it's happily running Terraform. If I come over to uh, my droplet list, hopefully you will see it coming up with the, the new machine. Oh, here's Do Train, and it's now building that machine and doing the right things. If I check in over here, it thinks it's still creating it. That's pretty normal. Uh, as it finishes that workflow, it's, which is done, it automatically grabbed the output. So if you remember, we added, we added some output. Those output variables here now translated into this DO train here, then put the IP address in from that output, and then it also captures them as Terraform variables. So as I do a downstream automation, this is literally gonna let me pull any information I want out of Terraform and feed it into the downstream stages, which could be additional Terraform plans 
or Ansible plans or whatever else you need it to be, or just tell somebody about it. I'm also capturing the Terraform state for the system, and that's looking pretty darn good, all things considered. That uh, I could also parse into that if I really wanted to reverse engineer Terraform, which I do not recommend. So at this point, we have gone through in about 15 minutes some pretty straightforward go get a profile, go get a Terraform plan that works, and then execute it in digital rebar. If I wanted to then destroy this, I would need a workflow that has, and let's go ahead and do this. Stage, our TF train. Here's our TF train. I can quickly clone this, not remove, clone. And we're going to call it TF drain. That won't be confusing. And in this case, we'll just say destroy instead of create. That looks great. And you know what? We don't need our SSH keys anymore, so we can just remove those. All we're doing is taking that away. We also need a workflow for this, so I'm going to do the same thing, TF drain. This time I'm going to remember to add the stage, TF drain. Excellent. That looks good. And now when I come back over here, and take my DF train, I can say TF drain, play that, and that's gonna run the, the same Terraform plan, but now with destroy, and that will remove the system and do all the cleanup necessary. So we've already packaged a lot of capability into that very straightforward Terraform task. Uh, baked out this pattern and we use it for a ton of things. So this is a great way to get started. One of the things that you might wanna do is not even worry about having to do this yourself, uh, what you would probably rather do is just build on top of the cloud provisioning workflows that we have going on. And to do that, we need a couple more minutes. So for that action, I just need to take this and then incorporate it into my cloud provisioning reference. So here we have a Linode provider block. I'm going to do the same thing here, except I'm going to call it DigitalOcean and then I'm going to end it. This by itself would just open up that block and that's fine. And what we can do is take this block that we have now tested and working and add it into the cloud provider. That's actually all I really need to do to make this uh, now start provisioning with Terraform. I'm going to get a, or DigitalOcean and Terraform. I'm going to get a little bit fancier. Um, I have already in the cloud wrappers gone through and defined these digital ocean image region size. And so I can very quickly param digital ocean uh, image. That looks great. Let's just copy these down. And they default to the same values that I showed you. So they, we will get exactly the right information. I will open one to show to show you what that looks like. That's the only additional change I need to make to create a fully formed cloud wrapper for DigitalOcean. Uh, and I, let me show you what those look like. So here's my DigitalOcean image. It's DigitalOcean image. It has a string and it has this default. Uh, the token's only more complex in that it has no default and it defines secure as true. So with that done, I can I'm about to upload my bundle. So I'm in this directory where the cloud wrappers are. These are the edits I've been making. You can see I just added that whole file into get into that wrapper. And I'm going to bundle and upload that content pack. So this is the new cloud wrapper with those changes I just made to it. Pretty straightforward. So if I do that, now when I call my, I'm going to create a whole new machine, create manually. Uh, I will call this one Rob. We are going to call it, we're going to provide our runner workflow. We are going to call it cloud provision. We're going to say digital ocean vehicle. This is not going to work. I will explain why in a moment. And we're going to go ahead and start that. You'll notice it goes ahead and does it. It's trying to start the system. We're 
failing on our cloud validate step because we're missing this required cloud provider value. Uh, so we have some checks to make sure you don't call Terraform if you don't have all your information. That's exactly what we wanted to do. So to fix that, I'm just going to add the cloud provider to that profile. Uh, this is DigitalOcean. That is the provider we identified, if you remember from that template I was quickly hacking through. And now over here, uh, it's actually going to, let's see, good. Uh, so it, it already knows what's going on. It picked that up uh, for me automatically, and it's literally going through and doing the Terraform apply with my exact same template now wrapped in my Cloud Wrapper workflow. So I don't have to do any additional work for it to then take advantage of this new Terraform uh, capability that I've, I've baked into that one template. This is pretty impressive stuff. If I come over into, into my DigitalOcean system, here is my Rob profile. It's going and being built, and all that stuff looks great. Um, it's going in. It's now Ansible, calling Ansible and joining the machine, and it'll go through. Uh, I think this one will fail because there's some firewall uh, changes that the workflow assumes that uh, DigitalOcean hasn't enabled on the CentOS server. So um, always some little tweaks that are different between the clouds, and you do have to take, take advantage of uh, how that works. And, continue to make our systems more and more robust. But it only took me, it took me 15 minutes to get Terraform into the system and another five to build this in a standard way for any cloud wrapper system. So now you will be able to take advantage of the digital ocean work that I just pounded out and added to digital rebars content libraries. Um, wow, it looks like we're just about done. So here we go. Uh, you can see we've done a full inventory, normal digital rebar stuff. Here's our instance variables. Here's the cloud provider reference instead of the one I wrote and our state files. And as I expected, it failed at the network firewall because of CentOS variations. All in a day's work. And then if I want, I can deprovision this and watch it go away. Tell it that its system's okay. And now we're gonna start doing our cleanup work and, and making everything better. That was a lot of functionality in just a couple minutes. Uh, take your time, go back through. If you have questions, please come and ask us. Uh, join our Slack uh, from rackend.com. We will be happy to put this in and, and help you walk through these infrastructure as code concepts. Uh, and this is not a Terraform specific thing. Using contexts uh, our customers are doing this to interact with any systems where they have additional workflow capabilities that they need to inject into their data center operations. Uh, and it is pretty normal to chain several context operations together, even for a system that you have as a physical machine where most of your actions are on the machine, you can come back to the server and take some context actions uh, off of the machine and then continue right back to the machine. Perfectly normal actions to do. Hope this was helpful. This is Rob Hirschfeld. Thanks for your attention.